sua companhia já pensou em interações negociadas no mercado de balcão norte-americano? Para falar mais sobre o assunto, entrevistamos hoje Cromwell Colson, presidente do grupo OPC Markets. Atualmente, quantas companhias são negociadas nos mercados da OTC e quantas delas são brasileiras? So, we have over 10,000 securities on our platform. And on our OTC QX marketplace, which is for the best companies, we have almost 300 companies. That's been growing very rapidly. For Brazilian companies, there's over 50 Brazilian OTC ADRs, of which six have upgraded to OTC QX. We have CLO, JBS, ALL Logistica, Lupitec, Klaben, and MRV. They're a great group of national champions, and it's a great start, and we think we're going to build from there. Over the next few years, you're going to see more and more Brazilian companies using our OTC QX platform to access international investors. E quanto custa para uma companhia ser negociada nos mercados da OTC? So, our fees are very reasonable. It's about $15,000 a year. And, however, for companies that are traded in the U.S., international companies, the expense is not the marketplace fee. The real expense, in, and it's an expense of time, it's an expense of resources, it's not, it's not a money, monetary expense, it is the complexity of meeting two different disclosure systems. In the U.S., you have to be SEC reporting as well as meet your local standards. Historically, many international exchanges didn't have that great listing standards. But that started to change, and almost all the leading exchanges around the world have great disclosure available for investors from their companies and great, and great quality control. So companies, especially we've seen in Europe, are seeing that they want to only choose one standard, and that one standard is their local standard. We see that more and more with national champions such as Adidas, Roche, BASF, all of these companies are able to produce great information under their local standards and then trade on OTCQX by providing that same information to, invest, to U.S. investors in English. As companhias brasileiras temem que sua liquidez migre para o mercado norte-americano se elas tiverem suas ações negociadas lá. Isso é verdade? That's a great question, because it's a common misperception that establishing an OTC ADR removes liquidity from the primary marketplace. In fact, The Australian Stock Exchange funded a study that showed Australian companies with OTC ADRs had greater liquidity and tighter spreads on the Australian Stock Exchange than companies that did not. In fact, we've seen this. Our biggest pool of companies on OTCQX are TSX-listed companies, and they're a lot like Brazilian companies because the markets share the same hours. And when Canadian companies join OTCQX, On average, their volume in the U.S. goes up 60%, but their share volume on the TSX goes up over 20%. So the pie grows when you have an OTC ADR. And it's very simple to understand it because you're making your securities available to more investors. And with OTC ADRs, every time one is created, an investor buys it from their broker. Their broker needs to go to the home market and buy that security. So it adds liquidity. OTC ADRs are complementary to primary market liquidity. O OTC QX poderia ser o estágio final de uma companhia rumo à Nasdaq ou NICE. No entanto, o que eu tenho visto é que muitas companhias têm migrado da NICE indo para o mercado de balcão norte-americano, principalmente o OTC QX. Por que isso está ocorrendo? So what we're seeing is, and a good example is Deutsche Telekom. Their ADR was on NYSE, and but their primary trading volume in their primary marketplace is Deutsche Börse. So they looked and they saw too much complexity in meeting two different listing standards. So they moved to OTCQX. They retained over 70% of their share volume in the U.S. on OTCQX with less than 10% of the complexity and effort. That's a huge value quotient for companies. Uh, thanks, Promo, for the interview. Obrigada, até logo.